Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Picture yourself a Mountie like Sergeant Preston, up there on the Yukon Trail, slugging it out with desperados with your bare fists. To have Sergeant Preston's great strength and stamina, you'd sure have to eat a good bodybuilding breakfast every morning. So remember to include big bowls of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in your breakfast because it gives you extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And oh boy, what tempting nut-like flavor and tender crispness in every mouth-watering spoonful, topped with milk or cream and luscious fresh fruit. Taste it tomorrow. For a nourishing treat, you can't beat Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. Two men stood at the rail of the Yukon Bell, the side-wheeler packet that was docked at Dawson City. They watched the scene below from the upper deck. The gangplank had been taken up, and the boat was preparing to leave for the trip to Selkirk. One of the men, Russ Gorman, spoke to his companion, Jim Kane. Looks like she's getting ready to pull out, Jim. Yep. Well, here we go, Russ, on the last leg of my long journey. I'm sure glad I ran into you in Dawson City, Jim. You said you'd let me in on a good deal if I came along with you. That you'd tell me all about it as soon as the boat started. Well, it's started now, so I'll tell you all about it. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, Russ, eight years ago down in Arizona, I was leading a gang, as you know. Yeah, I thought you were dead. If you hadn't recognized me last week, made yourself known... I never recognized you with those sideburns and a beard and all. <laughs> well, everybody thinks I'm dead, including my wife, Clara. You see, we pulled a big job down there. A posse got after us and cornered us in our camp. Yes, but how did you get away? Well, the camp was near the Hilo River. During the excitement, I headed for the river with some of the posse close behind. When I reached the river bank, one of them put a bullet in my shoulder. Then they caught you? No, no, no. I was on the edge of a low bluff overhanging the water. I fell in and managed to make my way into some tall reeds along the shore. They searched a while and then, believing I'd drowned, they gave up and left. That was luck. Yeah. Everybody thought you'd been killed. That's right. I was known as Jim Lane, then. I just changed the last name to Kane. Yeah. You were the notorious Jim Lane, outlaw leader. I remember everybody in Arizona City talking about how the posse shot you and broke up the gang. That's what I wanted them to think, that Jim Lane was dead. Well, I hung around Frisco for years, and then when the rush started for the Yukon, I decided I might come up. I hadn't quite made up my mind till I found out something. Yeah, what was that? That my wife had sold our small farm in Arizona and had taken our kid. He was 12 then. And had come to the Yukon to sell Kirk. So that's why you came up this way. To hunt up your wife again. No, huh? not exactly, Russ. You see, she had a brother, Ed Clark. Ed was sent to sell Kirk as express agent. He took Claire and the boy Len along with him. The boy must be grown now. Let's see, if he was about 12 when you disappeared, he must be about 20 now. 
Say, I never thought of that. Yeah, that's right. Well, what's your reason for going to Selkirk if you don't intend to look him up? To get even with that brother-in-law of mine, Ed Clark. He never did like me. I found out he was the one who put the posse on the trail of our gang eight years ago. Yeah, uh, that was a dirty trick. Sure it was. And after I was declared dead, he moved to the farm with Claire and Lynn. He built it up. They sold out for plenty, I heard. The dough they got really belonged to you, Jim. That's the way I look at it. How are you going to get back at him? Well, that's where you come in. Yeah. I understand this boat is taking a shipment of money to the express office of Selkirk. Now, after the money is delivered, we'll walk in on Ed Clark, rob the safe, and take him along with us so as to make it look like he made off of the money. Yeah, so that's it. Uh-huh. You gonna tell him who you are? Sure. A fellow I met in Dawson City told me about a shack along the river near Selkirk where he hid from the law. He drew a map showing me how to get to it. Here it is. Mm. And that's where you'll take Clark to hide out. Yeah, we'll take him there, but we won't keep him there. We'll get rid of him by dropping him in the river with a rock tied to him. Hey, watch out, the map's blowing away. Uh, she blew right out of my hand, Jim. It's gone over the side. Well, no matter. I remember the directions on it. Come on, let's go to the cabin and play cards. <laughs> On the lower deck, near the stern of the boat, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police stood at the rail with his dog, Yukon King, beside him, watching the passing scenery. Well, King boy, this trip to Selkirk will give us a chance to rest up a bit. Oh, a piece of paper must have been dropped by someone on the upper deck. Bring it here, King. Thank you, boy. Oh, looks like a crude map. Let's see... No, it's more likely directions to a claim that Selkirk printed in there. This must represent the main south trail and a branch trail to the river. I think that little square there represents a claim or perhaps a cabin. Might as well keep it a while, eh, boy? Come on, King, we'll go see how black is going. It was afternoon when the boat finally docked at Selkirk after an uneventful trip. Sergeant Preston mounted his horse, Blackie, and with King, rode to the constable's office. Oh, Blackie. Oh, boy. Steady. Come on, King. Hello, Frank. How's everything in Selkirk? Hello, Sergeant. Good to see you. You know Lynn Lane, the constable from Indian Creek. Oh. Hi, Sergeant. Lynn, glad to see you. I ought to know, Lynn, since I helped with his training as a rookie. Hey, Lynn? Yes, sir. What brings you to Selkirk? Something wrong in Indian Creek? Oh, no, no, Sergeant. I just came to visit my mother. She lives here, you know. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten for the moment. How's your Uncle Ed doing at the express office? Well, frankly, he seemed a little worried lately. He put all of his savings into grub-staking someone that didn't pan out. He borrowed more at the bank, thinking the prospector needed a little more time and equipment, but still nothing has developed. Now he's worried about his debt to the bank. In other words, he threw more good money after bad, huh? I didn't think the gold bug would get your Uncle Ed. Gets everyone who comes up here at one time or another, Lynn. <laughs> People have to learn by experience that they can't all strike it rich. Well, let's get out those reports, Frank. Sure thing, Sergeant. Later that night at the express office, Lynn's uncle, Ed Clark, was checking through some waybills at his desk when the door opened and two men entered. Oh, good evening. What can I do for you? We uh, came in on a little business to you, Clark. What? I, I don't know just what you mean, mister. Say, uh, something familiar about you. Yeah? The way you talk. Uh, have you been in here before? No, I just got into town. Oh, stop blabbering, Jim. Get to the point. Yeah, I reckon we're better. Why? Uh, frankly, we came in to pick up that shipment of money that arrived this afternoon. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What's the meaning of the gun? Get why you dope this a hold up. Get over there and open the safe. No, you can't take that Get money. Get over there and open the pronter. I'll let you have it. All right. I'll open it. That's the idea. Good. He's got it open, Russ. Clean it out while I keep him covered. Sure, yeah. There, there. I got it all. There's plenty of cash in these packets. Yeah, plenty. You won't get away with this. The Mounties will be on your trail as soon as you leave here. <laughs> Listen to him, Jim. 
<laughs> Thinks we're going to let him go and tell the Mounties all about it. Yeah, Clark, you're going to come along with us. Our horses are out back where you have yours hitched. This is one time you won't tell the law and get a posse on our trail. Wait a minute. Now I know who you are. Yeah? But it's not possible. Jim Lane was killed. The posse shot him, and he drowned in the Gila River. Yeah, sure. I reckon I'm just a ghost. So you can call this revenge from beyond the grave or something like that, huh? You. You here in Selkirk. For eight years, Clara, Lynn, and I have been very happy. Yeah? Lynn never knew what his father was. You mean the kid never knew I was an outlaw? No. Clara didn't want the disgrace to warp his life. He thinks you were killed in an accident. You were away so much, he never got to know you very well. <laughs> That's a hot... <laughs> yeah. Well, the boy won't feel any disgrace over his old man. But it won't set so good when everybody says his Uncle Led went crooked and robbed his own express office. Well, how can they say that? Shut no. up and get moving out the back way. Rush, lock the front door and pull the shade. All right. We can leave now, Jim. Let's get away from here. All right. Clara refused to have anything to do with me after she found out it was outside the law. And you egged her on, Clark. You and your sanctimonious manners. Well, you'll disappear with the express money and you won't be heard of again. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Jim. Think of your son. Son? He never meant anything to me. Claire always considered him her son, kept me away from him. <laughs> like I said before, it's sort of revenge from beyond. And Claire will ever never know that you, her pious brother, didn't run off with all the cash. Now get going. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Supposing we were to go into the old-time general store in Whitehorse, the store where gold prospectors get their supplies. I'll bet the sleepy old-timer who runs this store would really perk up his ears if we told him about Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice being shot from guns. Hey, uh, uh, hey who, what, uh, what varmint's shooting up my store? <laughs> the only thing I know of that's being shot are the breakfast cereals shot from guns. A breakfast cereal? Yep, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice. The swellest tasting, ready-to-serve cereals from here to Whitehorse. But uh, them guns. Why, they're the guns that are loaded with choice, sun-ripened premium grains of rice or wheat. And then these guns are exploded. <laughs> Out come big, giant grains, eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up, nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. Say, I reckon I'd have me a gold mine right in this store if I could sell rice or wheat shot from guns. You sure would. Folks like it for breakfast, lunch, or supper. All you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with fresh fruit, like juicy red strawberries. <laughs> Mighty inviting, I calls it. Mighty nourishing, too. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Well, I, I better get me some of them right away, huh? And that's a tip for you fellas and girls, too. Tell your mom to please look for the red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Then she'll be sure to get the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Ask your mom to get them tomorrow because there are eight different new packages with Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models. Yep, you get swell models of a white horse general store like mine, of Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team of huskies, Yukon Riverboat with a stern wheel that actually turns. Actually, a total of 59 models that are larger, easier to build, amazingly different. So hurry, they're at your grocer's now. Yukon Trail packages of the one and only Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. (laughs) 
Now to continue. It was later that night when Lynn Lane entered the constable's office where Preston and the constable were finishing up some desk work. Sergeant, something's happened. What's happened, Lynn? Uncle Ed didn't come home. So I went to the express office to see what was keeping him. Yes? The door is locked and the shade's drawn. He doesn't answer my knock. That's strange. Yes, it is. Maybe he went uptown, Lynn. Yes, he might have stopped at the cafe or somewhere. No, if he closed for the night, why would he leave the lamps burning in the office? He wouldn't, unless he intended to go right back. Let's go uptown and inquire. If we don't find him, we'll force our way into the express office and see what's the trouble. Let's go. Come along, gang. It didn't take the three Mounties long to search around town for Ed Clark. Lynn went back to his mother's house to make sure he hadn't gone there. Then the three men went to the express office. Door's still locked. Let's go around to the back. All right. The back door's probably bolted from the inside, too. We'll soon find out. This door is unlocked. Let's go in. <laughs> hey, look, Sergeant. The safe is open. Yes. Wide open and empty. I don't get it. What can it mean? I hate to say it, Lynn. But I'd say it looks on the surface as if your uncle made off with the shipment of cash that came in today. What? No, Uncle Ed wouldn't do such a thing. Easy, Lynn. Frank isn't directly accusing your uncle, but it is strange to find him gone and the safe empty. What are you going to do, Sergeant? The only thing to do, Lynn, is find Ed Clark. Oh, I... I want to help you. I want to be there when you find him. I'm sure Uncle Ed can explain all this. All right, Lynn, you stick with me. First, we'll get something of your uncle's so that King can pick up the scent. There's an old hat hanging on the peg on the wall over there. That's Uncle Ed's. Good, that'll do. Here, King. <laughs> In front of the safe, Sergeant Preston held out the hat to the intelligent dog. King caught the express agent's scent from the hat. Then Preston pointed to the floor near the safe and spoke. Find him, King. Find him, boy. <laughs> He's going to the back door. Yes, come on. He's found the scent out here. Wait a minute, King. Look here, Frank. In the bright twilight of the late spring evening, Sergeant Preston was able to see the ground clearly. He called the attention of the other two Mounties to hoof marks in the soil. Uh, hoof marks are more than one horse here. Of course, it could be someone stopped out here to pick up some express. Could be. But from King's actions, I'm sure Ed Clark was one of these riders. Lynn, hmm. bring our horses around here to the back, will you? Well, yes, sir. Right away. I sure feel sorry for Lynn. Yes. If it turns out his uncle did abscond with the express money, I'm afraid he'll take it hard. His mother saved Lynn from one disgrace, Frank. Why, what was that, Sergeant? She told us at headquarters when Lynn applied for membership on the force that his father was an outlaw and killer in Arizona. Oh. Lynn never knew. I can't understand why Clark would disgrace the boy now after helping protect him before. That's sure tough. Lynn's a fine chap and a good Mountie. Yes, he is. Here are the horses, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Easy, boy. Do you want me to go along with you, Sergeant? No, Frank, you'd better stay in town, but be sure to get the express clerk to come down and lock up the office. Right. I suggest you keep the matter quiet until we get back. I don't expect to be gone long. All right, just as you say. Let's get going, Lynn. Right. Steady, fellow. Yeah, right. Find him, King. Find him, boy. I'm ready, Sergeant. See you later, Frank. Good luck. Get up, boy. Come on, get up. Later, Jim Kane and Russ Gorman arrived at the cabin hideout with Ed Clark as their prisoner. They had tied Clark to a chair in the cabin, and Jim sat gloating over his victim. <laughs> well, brother-in-law, how do you feel knowing that everybody in town is probably saying you're crook? The day Clara married you, I told her she'd be sorry, Lane. Sure, I know. But I persuaded her everything you said wasn't true. But she came from the same stock you did and turned against me when she learned how I got my cash. Look, I'm not interested in talking about the past. Believe me when I get away from here. You better tell him our plans for his future, Jim. He, he don't have much of a future. When we leave here in the morning, he'll be at the bottom of the river out there, tied to a big rock. And... The Mounties will pick up our trail. You won't get away, you wait and see. Brave talking, huh, Jim? Yeah. They'll be trailing you, Clark. If you remember... We put you on my horse at the Branch Trail and sent your horse galloping along the South Trail. That's the trail they'll follow. <laughs> well, we'll make some coffee now, Russ. Then before we turn in, we'll tie my loving brother-in-law to a rock and put him to bed in the river. 
Meantime, King, followed by Sergeant Preston and Lynn Lane, ran along the south trail, picking up the scent of Lynn's Uncle Ed. They rode past the branch trail and continued along the main one. Your uncle headed toward Indian Creek, Lynn. Yes. Looks as though the pace of his horse changed along here. Mark show he was galloping. I noticed the other two horses that seemed to follow along with Clark's horse turned off at the branch trail. What do you make of that? Might have been a couple of people who have a claim out that way. But there aren't any claims out there near the riverside. Hold on, hold on. Here, boy. Why are you stopping? I just remembered a piece of paper with a drawing on it I found on the boat. I have it here in my breast pocket. Just wanted to... Sergeant, look up ahead. A horse grazing beside the trail. Oh, let's go there. Get up, Buggy. Come on, boy. Get up. Oh, 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 oh. oh steady. This is Uncle Head's horse. That's strange. Steady, <laughs> Bullock. <laughs> Come on, King. There aren't any hoof marks or footprints on the trail from here on that are fresh, Lynn. What do you think about all this? Your uncle can't fly. He may have changed to one of those horses that went along the branch trail. Oh, by the way, this drawing. Uh-huh. Look at it. Oh, I know now. It's giving directions to an old shack up the river. Oh? A bandit used it for a hideout. We found out later after he made a getaway. A hideout, eh? Someone on the boat dropped this over the rail, but the wind blew it back to the lower deck where King and I were standing. We'll go to that old shack and see if there's anyone there. Steady, fellas. Easy, boy. <laughs> Come on, King. Oh, 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 oh. Later in the shack, Jim and Russ were preparing to get rid of Ed Clark. <laughs> There, I untied him from the chair, Jim. His hands are still tied, though. We'll walk him to the bluff along the river, then tie his feet to a rock and toss him in. I'll keep him covered, Russ. You bring more cord. Yeah, I already got it. Get going, you. Oh, no, I'm not going. We'll carry you out unconscious, then. You... This will take care of you. Oh! A fool. I'll put a bullet in him just for good measure. Oh, you don't. Oh! I'll get that money. Oh! Good shot, man. What's that man, King? Keep him away! Sergeant! There's Uncle Ed. His hands are tied and he's unconscious. He's been hit in the head. As Lynn knelt beside his uncle, Sergeant Preston examined Jim Kane. After a moment, he spoke. Your aim was a little too good, Lynn. You mean I killed him? Yes, Lynn. It was in the line of duty. Oh, I didn't mean to kill him. He was a crook, but Lynn. still I... Lynn! Oh. Uncle Ed, are, are you all right? Yes, they robbed the safe. Tried to make it look like I did it. We got here just in time. They were going to kill you. I know. Uh, Sergeant, I want to speak to you alone. Oh, of course, Mr. Clark. I'll cut the cords. Oh, there. Thanks. Now you can get up. Here, let me help you. Oh, there you go. Sit down a minute. There you are. Thanks. Now, if I can talk to you... Lynn, take King with you and take this wounded man into the back room and fix his wound. All right, Sergeant. Come on, you. Hey, take it easy. Sergeant, Sergeant Lynn mustn't know. That man on the floor is his father. Oh. If he comes to and talks, if he finds out who Lynn he is... He won't talk, Ed. Lynn had to shoot him to save me. Sorry to say the bullet killed him. Oh. No matter. He's wanted for more than one murder in Arizona. But Lynn must never know who he really is. Uh, I'll get Lynn away from that other fellow in case he finds out Lynn's name and says something. Good. Lynn! Oh, Lynn! Calling me, Sergeant? Yes, bring that man out here. I'll attend to him. All right. Come on, you. Hey, did I hear you calling this fellow Lynn? Didn't he call Clark his, his uncle? There are lots of Lynns around here, mister. I suggest that if you hooked up with your partner since he came to the Yukon, you don't say a thing that might connect you with his past. He's wanted for murder in Arizona. Oh, then he was a killer. Yes, he was, Lynn, and worse. I see the packets of stolen money on the table there, and that's evidence that will hold this man. I never had anything to do with Kane's past. They can't... Then the best thing you can do is tell the truth about when you met him and where and forget anything he said about his past. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't want to get mixed up in a murder rap. Uncle Lad, I I knew you couldn't have stolen that money. And I'm sure glad we got the ones who did. Yeah, so am I, Lynn. You've been like a father to me, and... Something like that really happened, I'd be disgraced for life. I, I'd i resign from the force. Well, your uncle's cleared, Lynn. I'm sure you'll never have reason to feel disgraced. 
After we get back to town and put this crook in jail, we'll be able to say this case is closed. Buy America's Favorite. Yes, enjoy delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. These famous cereals shot from guns are the four-to-one favorite among all brands of puff cereals, according to independent coast-to-coast surveys. No wonder they're your best buy. They're crisp, tender, full of tempting nut-like flavor because only the choice premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size. Then consider the nourishment in every bowl your family eats. Extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Every morning, let your whole family enjoy this economical deluxe family breakfast. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fresh fruit like sweet, juicy red strawberries. Remember, the flavor and crispness of wheat and rice shot from guns are safeguarded because these famous breakfast cereals come only in the large red and blue packages which have an inner lining for double protection. That's why Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. So tomorrow, get both delicious kinds. And be sure the famous picture of the smiling Quaker man is on each package. Here's a word from Sergeant Preston. School's just about finished. Boys and girls, summertime's playtime. Don't let sudden death turn fun to tragedy. Be careful. Be alert. Don't play in the streets. Keep a sharp lookout for traffic. If you drive a bike or car, observe the rules of traffic and the laws of common sense. Be careful where you swim. Don't swim too soon after eating and swim only where you know the water hazards. Here's another important word. There'll be a two-week holiday before our next adventure. Jake and I'll be away until the last week in June. We'll return at the end of this month in a brand new series of thrill-packed adventures on another national network. Watch your local newspapers for the announcement of the time and station so you'll hear the beginning of this new exciting series of Challenge of the Yukon adventures. They'll be broadcast each week starting the last week in June. Be with us then. We're counting on you to join us when we once more meet the Challenge of the Yukon. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.